Hey guys, so uh, this is my second video, and I'm going to do more drawing, and I know like that's still like kind of introductory stuff, Still, we're still in like the preliminary stages of Orgo, but you know, this stuff really um, sets the foundation of things to come, so yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so pretty much I'm going to go into how to generate drawings, how to create them. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go down the list of common elements in organic compounds and just, um, yeah, show you the trends on how they bond and stuff. So I'm going to start with carbon. And we know carbon is in the fourth group, so it brings along four valence electrons. And this is how it usually bonds. It can bond like this, so th uh, four single bonds. It can bond with one double bond, and it can also have one triple bond and one single bond, like that. Um, next most common uh, element is hydrogen, so hydrogen brings along one electron, and it bonds with one bond. That's You guys are probably comfortable with that. Um, Next one is oxygen. So oxygen brings with it six electrons. And to stay uh, closed shell neutral, meaning to have a full octet, eight electrons, and have uh, zero formal charge, it likes to bond like this with either uh, two single bonds or with one double bond, like that. Okay, so nitrogen, five valence electrons, and it likes to have three bonds with it, so it can have three single bonds, it can have um, one double bond like that, or it can have uh, one triple bond like that. Um, Next one is uh, halogens. So I'm just I'm gonna write X, but so that's uh, that's like pretty uh, general term for halogens. Uh, but I'm gonna use chlorine as an example. Um, so chlorine brings along with it uh, seven electrons, and it, it kind of acts like a hydrogen in that it it likes having one single bond. And remember, this is all for closed shell neutral, meaning that it had the, that all these atoms, all of these atoms will have eight electrons, so a full valency, and they will have a neutral formal charge, which means that the electron density surrounding them equals the electron density it's normally associated with. So neutral charge, so this is the most stable uh, composition. And so we can use these kind of trends to uh, draw Compound. So I'm going to write down a formula, C4H11O2N, and we can use these uh, little tools or little trends that we came up with and, and draw what, what a uh, compound with this formula can look like. Um, so, I will draw this one. Oh, that's a little a little close there, but sorry. Alright, and so yeah, so this is one possible way to draw it. And to double check, we can go through the list, we can sum up the total number of electrons that each um, atom brings along, so we can sum it up for the whole compound, and then we can um, we can double check. So I I hope I have enough room here. So 
I probably don't. I'll try anyways. Okay, so C brings along with it four electrons, and we have four. Okay? Hydrogen brings along one electron, and we have 11 of them. Oxygen brings six electrons. We have two of them. And nitrogen brings along five electrons, and we only have one of them. And if we sum this up, we should get 4, 16, um, 27, 39, 44. So 44 total electrons. Now we can double check with um, with our thing. So remember, each bond is two electrons. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44. So yes, we have the same number of electrons. This is a valid Lewis structure for uh, this formula. We can also draw, so we're not limited to a single um, structure. We can also, let's put both these alcohol groups on one carbon. Um, and then let's let's just slip this nitrogen in the middle like that. Okay. Uh, put our lone pair. Nitrogen likes having three bonds. And so this is another valid structure for the same formula. It's a whole different compound, though, different connectivity. And uh, we can double check with the, this electron thing. So you can, you can just take my word for it that they all work. Um, however, this is a gross oversimplification of this whole process. And I chose this compound specifically so that it would work out this way. Uh, as you can see, in both compounds, we only have single bonds. Um, and there are no other abnormalities. So there's no double bonds, there's no triple bonds, and there's no, like, there are no, like, ring structures in this. And so this is what we call a fully saturated, uh, uh hydrocarbon. And, um, but, you know, life doesn't always work out that way. And to, uh, to, to account for those, um, possibilities for those possible double bonds and stuff like that there's a thing there's a concept called units of unsaturation so I'm just gonna clear some space and I'm gonna talk about this units of unsaturation come on there you go And so, what does saturation mean? Well, like in dietary, saturated uh, fats, they're bad for you, right? And that's because they are fully saturated with hydrogens, meaning that uh, they're just flooded with all the possible number of hydrogens that this fatty chain can have. And you know, it's bad for you because, you know, those, those uh, carbon-hydrogen chains have a lot of energy and you know you think energy is good but that's why it's unhealthy and um, so units of unsaturation means we're we're lacking hydrogens in our um, in our compound right so uh, I'm uh, I'm just gonna dive into this concept uh, without the uh, more explanation without uh, the help of my drawings so let's take a simple little alkane like this, right? And let's compare it with a relative. So let's compare it with this guy. And so both of these compounds have two carbons, right? Except the one on the right is lacking two hydrogens. And that's because these electrons um, that could be bonded with hydrogen, you know, over here, 
rather than being bo possibly bonded to hydrogen, it's bonded to more carbon. So um, there's less uh, hydrogens in the compound, right? And it's um, it's exactly two less, and that will um, uh, bring me to my next point that a unit of unsaturation is equal to missing two hydrogens in the structure okay and we can um, we can compare it to yet another relative this alkyne this uh, triple bonded um, carbon chain and so this follows our trend remember our closed shell neutral trend um, but this this uh, compound is missing two additional hydrogens so um, yeah so a triple bond is actually two units of unsaturation and this double a double bond is one unit and um, I use these these comp or this like uh, structure for um, for an example, but it's true for like all double bonds and all triple bonds. You're gonna be missing two um, hydrogens for every double bond and uh, four hydrogens for every triple bond, right? And so there's actually uh, one more possibility for um, a unit of unsaturation. And so we will compare, that's blue, so we will compare this carbon chain with this one, oops, that's a C. And you know, both these compounds are still following those same rules. All carbons are have four bonds total, and each hydrogen has one bond total. So they're all following the rules, except since I drew um, the car compound on the right just a little bit differently. It has the same number of carbons, it's just drawn differently. We can see that it's lacking two hydrogens, and the same thing can be said for this. So, yeah, there, it's just drawn a little bit differently, and because I drew it differently, it's missing two hydrogens. And, um, yeah, so a ring, if you have a ring in your structure, that is also one unit of unsaturation. And I should probably stop this video there, um, because my time is going out but um, yeah I'll just write down these trends so a um, green so a double bond or a ring is one unit of unsaturation and a triple bond is two units and that is all um, I hope this helped I will go more into depth on what is uh, what unit of unsaturation is and how we can use it but yeah that is all for the to, for today so thank you bye bye